Welcome back for more crazy words from the students at Jefferson Elementary School in partnership with Logic of English. The words uh, for today are very interesting. The first word is horrendous, and Essence um, submitted the word horrendous. How many syllables in hor ren dus? Three. Now, I want you to sound it out uh, with me as I write it on the board, and then we'll talk about this word, because this was an interesting word, and I was able to look a few things up in the dictionary, and I got kind of excited about it. So the first syllable is hor. <sighs> o, hor. The second syllable is ren. Er, eh, n. And the third syllable is dus. D, a, uh, s. So, how will we mark horrendous? We'll underline the us. And what sound of ow, o, u, a uh, is this? It's the fourth sound, a. Uh. So, we'll put a little four over it. Now, do you have any idea what the uh, root word of horrendous is? It's actually horror. And to be uh, horror means afraid. And then we have horrify and horrific. And all of these words are based on the root hor, which means fear or afraid. And then us is the suffix that means full of. So something that's horrendous is something that's full of fear. The next word is tongue, and this word was submitted by Mary. So how many syllables in tongue? One. Now, this word always confused me until I learned the logic of English and until I learned the phonogram g gua. So let me show it to you because it will be really easy once you see this. So let's sound it out together. We have t, a, n, g. Now notice we used a two letter g here and then a silent final e. So the key to the word tongue is that it uses the two letter g phonogram and then English words do not end in I, U, V, or J. So one of the reasons for a silent final E is because uh, we want to keep the U from being at the end. English words don't end in V or U. So we add a silent E. So it becomes really clear that this is tongue and uh, that this is the two letter G with a silent E when you know the rules of the logic of English. The next word is genius. And Marshall submitted the word genius. And how many syllables in gene, e, us? Three. So let's send it out together. The first syllable is g, j, e. The second syllable is ni, n, e. And the third syllable is us. So do you know why the g said j here? G may soften to j before an e, i, or y. So here it's before an e, so it says j, g. Do you know why the e said its name? because it's at the end of the syllable. Then we have the I saying E. So the I has four sounds, I, I, E, Y. And here it's saying it's E sound. And then we have us, genius. So that is why uh, genius is spelled in that manner. The next word is Quidditch. And Quidditch was submitted by Angeli, Autumn, and Emily. And Quidditch is a word that uh, J.K. Rowling uh, made up as a sport that's found in the Harry Potter books. By the way, J.K. Rowling's books are filled with outstanding examples of roots. And if you begin to understand roots in English, you'll really have an appreciation for some of the characters and some of the names in her books. But let's look at the spelling of Quidditch because she uh, followed the rules and the phonograms perfectly. So how many syllables in quid ditch? Uh, two. And the first syllable sounded out with me is quid, qu, i, d. And the second syllable is ditch, d, i, t, ch. And how will we mark quidditch? We'll underline the qu and we'll underline the ch. Now, q always needs a u and u is not a vowel here. And then we have three letter ch, which is used only after a vowel which does not say its name. And here it's saying the i sound, so it's not saying its name or its long sound. So the TCH is used correctly in the word quidditch. And it's really fun when you know the rules and phonograms, you can make up new words. Uh, 
when you know the roots like she did, you can make up really fascinating words that have meaning and hidden meaning to them. So understanding, again, the logic of English is really fun and a great part of understanding literature as well. The last word is tsunami, and it was submitted by Ryan. And I really thought this was an interesting word. So let's sound out how many syllables there are in it. tsu na me three syllables. Sound it out with me. We have tsu, then we have na, and then we have me. Okay, so first of all, we have the u saying its long sound, tsu, at the end of the syllable. Uh, those of you who are familiar with this will know that u has two long sounds, u and u, and they're both uh, variations of the long sound. And then we have na, where here the A is saying its broad sound, a, 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 and then me. Here we have the I saying the I, I, E, the E sound, um, tsunami. Now some of you are thinking, but English words do not end in I, U, V, or J. And you're right. Do you know what the origin of this word is? Because every time you have a word that ends in an I, that is a clue for you that it comes from another culture. And so do you know what culture this comes from? It actually comes from Japanese. And su means harbor in Japanese, and nami means wave. So a tsunami in Japanese is a harbor wave. And once again, whenever you say a, see a word that ends in I, you know that that word came from another culture. So thank you so much for joining us for Crazy, List, or Crazy Words List 2.